lines from the Rolling Stones song, Sympathy for the Devil. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am a man of wealth and taste. Notice that V is depicted in this caption at the end of his declaration as a devil with horns. V, as in several other places throughout V for Vendetta, reveals his identity as not just a satanic figure, but as Satan himself. Sympathy for the devil is the first person narrative in which the words leave no doubt as to who is supposed to be singing. Members of a local Christian youth group are gathering in Raleigh tonight to protest a new movie. The Golden Compass is an adventure film about a young girl who embarks on an epic quest through worlds of talking bears and witches. But some say it's anti-Christian. Sabrina Zimmering is live at the Mission Valley Cinema in Raleigh with more. Sabrina? Well, Shay, youth from the local uh, Christian film school, Burn, we're out here tonight braving the rain and the cold, waving signs, warning parents of the message that the Golden Compass gives. That's odd. She acted as though she'd never seen a person's demon before. Come on, Pan. In Lyra's world, which is a parallel universe to our own, you're never alone. You always have this companion for life who is every other facet of you. Look, Pan, it says I mustn't let Mrs. Scooter get hold of it or we'll all die. Everybody has this animal, a demon, which represents their inner person, who they are. <laughs> Who's she? People can talk with their demons. Don't know. But she shut up the master, all right? Nobody else really notices it. And they understand each other completely. As a child, your demon is able to take whatever form it wants to. So Pan, Pantalaimon, who is Lyra's demon, is able to change into all kinds of shapes. He's not constantly changing. It depends on like what whatever her mood is and how she's feeling. I will not have my niece slithering around like an alley cat. Behave yourself. Yeah. Pan really is the mirror. You know, they're the mirror image of of Lyra. Um, I think having a demon is like, instead of wearing, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve, it's your heart walking side by side by you. Pan, it's her. She's running the gobblers. We've got to get out of here. I think the demon is the voice inside your head, you know, your sort of gut feeling, saying, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that. And that's what the demons are, except they just express it out loud and they're visible, they're out there. When you get to puberty, when you sort of become, a, become an adult, it, it fixes shape, and that's the person you are. Lord Asriel has a snow leopard, and that's who his inner self is. The worst thing that could happen is that someone would take your demon away from you. And the most terrifying thing would be to see a human being without their demon. We are here because uh, I think there's so many parents out there, genuinely, who do not realize uh, what uh, the Golden Compass story is about. We think that there's many parents who don't even realize that they're selling demons as being cute furry creatures. Uh, they don't realize that, uh, that the goal of this little girl is actually deicide. The story tracks a little girl that sets out on an adventurous quest that lands her in conflict with a sinister group called the Magisterium. The Magisterium in the movie is an oppressive group of people who dress in church-like robes and make pronouncements about the way people should behave. Some have inferred that the Magisterium is the teaching authority of the church. Magisterium is actually the real term for the Pope and his council of bishops. Theories about what will happen in the year 2012 are a lot like snowflakes. No two are alike. I've found while doing the research for this presentation that there is in fact a reason that there is so much disagreement among researchers about what is supposed to happen in the year 2012. Let's start with a very common claim 
that on December 21st, 2012, there will be some kind of alignment with the center of our galaxy. There are two main versions to this part of the theory. One camp says that the alignment will be when the sun rises above the horizon on December 21st, 2012, the winter solstice, that the sun will rise in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, thus causing an alignment with the Earth, Sun, and the galactic center. And it does, in fact, seem to do this, more or less. You can verify this with an astronomy program. There are, however, at least two problems with this. This event is only significant from the Earth's point of view. The precession cycle, or the roughly 26,000 year wobble of the Earth, only causes the effect of the stars changing position on the horizon, and therefore only the effect of a galactic alignment. If you were viewing this from anywhere else in the solar system, it would be totally insignificant. This is only a visual effect, and only from the Earth's perspective and no gravitational force or radiation can be expected from this event because other than the tilt of the earth nothing will be any different than the last few thousand solstices we will be no closer to galactic center on that day than on any other day and in fact we'll be further away from galactic center than we were even when the Mayans made this prediction which we'll look into here in just a second but if the Mayans did in fact point to this event with their calendar which we will also look into later it should be noted how totally harmless and insignificant the event is other than if earth-based people gave significance to it either for timekeeping or for religious reasons but to be sure it is not going to cause a pole shift or any other cataclysm it can't it's only an illusion more or less the other problem with this is that because precession is so slow there is almost no difference between, say, this year, 2008, on December 21st, and December 21st in 2012. The sun will also rise in galactic center this year on the solstice as well. The other camp of the 2012 alignment issue is probably the more significant one, because it's dealing with the solar system's actual location in relation to galactic center. The idea is that our little solar system is moving around the center of the galaxy every 225 to 250 million years or so. And while doing this, it's also moving up and down in a cycle crossing the middle of the plane every 33 million years. So the question is, are we going to cross that galactic plane in 2012? Not even close. According to the journal Nature and others, there is evidence of crossing this plane 3 million years ago. This would mean that we are moving away from the galactic plane and won't be due to cross for another 30 million years. Not to mention that the margin of error in these calculations is at least 2.1 parsecs, or about 6.5 light years, making images like these completely meaningless. Moving on to the idea of a pole shift. Although many theorists disagree on whether this pole shift will be magnetic or a physical shifting of the crust of the Earth, the reason for this happening in or around 2012 is usually cited as one of the following reasons. Planetary alignment, Planet X or Nibiru and its comet's tail, a tremendous sun flare, or an asteroid. The first one is easy enough. There is no planetary alignment on December 21st, 2012. This is what the planets will look like on that date. Let's take a look at some of the Planet X theories. The idea of Nibiru, or Planet X, is traced back to Zachariah Sitchin and his translations of the Sumerian texts, and specifically to his interpretation of VA243 cylinder seal, which he says shows that the Sumerians knew of 12 planets minus the sun and the moon which they considered planets and this would mean that there is another planet his interpretation of the seal is wrong the Sumerians have an unambiguous symbol for the sun a circle with four triangles around it like rays and squiggly lines between the triangles that is emphatically not the symbol in the seal the symbol used in the seal is that of a bright star this symbol for stars is very commonly used and this is the symbol that we have in the seal. So even Sitchin's basic premise is wrong. Sitchin claims that the picture shows Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto too. But the Sumerians didn't have telescopes and therefore could only have known about those planets if aliens told them about their existence. 